fire in you? I gotta be honest. It's easy to think about peace as a bubble. Ignoring the world so that you can chill out and get a little you time. Or, or maybe you think of peace as a simple agreement. You do your thing, I do mine. Then we don't have to worry about each other's problems or the ways we're different from each other. Or you might see peace as a big grand thing. General, this treaty officially ends all wars. But true peace doesn't look like any of that. True peace is messy. It takes hard work and creativity. It says, how can I listen to you first before I speak? It says, how can I learn what it's like to walk in your shoes before I try to fix it? How can we get creative to find a way through? See, when you do the hard work of making peace, others can see God at work in you. That's why making peace is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship, it's about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. everybody, it's me, Jacob, and today you're gonna help me solve a mystery. 
The case of the mysterious envelope. Dun dun dun! What do you think it is? Is it a, a thank you gift? A prank? A peace offering? Actually, peace is what we're talking about today. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. But that doesn't get me any closer to finding out what's inside this package. I feel like I should be wearing gloves for this. Yeah. Monkey bridge? What's a monkey bridge? A few twigs and some string, but no instructions. <gasps> Another mystery. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, clearly this is a bridge building kit. Well, maybe the sticks are the decking, but how do I, maybe I'm supposed to weave it together. This doesn't make any sense. I gotta get creative. I gotta think outside the box to find a solution. Actually, that's exactly what someone in today's story did. Now, how do you build a monkey bridge? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25. God had promised David would be king, but for now, King Saul ruled Israel. David lived his life on the run, followed by a group of misfits who had become friends and servants. One day, they arrived in the desert of Paran, near the land of a wealthy man named Nabal, who owned 3,000 sheep. We'll set up camp here, men. At first, Nabal's servants didn't know what to think. Too many strangers around these parts. We've had food and sheep go missing. But David's men were honorable. They didn't try to steal from the shepherds. In fact, David protected Nabal's shepherds from any harm. Stay as long as you like, my friend. About time for sheep shearing, isn't it? Oh, yes. Nabal will hold a grand feast when it's all over. Your men have helped us, so they should share in the celebration. David called for 10 of his men and gave them a message to send to Nabal. On it. David's messengers hurried up the mountain to Nabal's estate and were brought to stand before him. Well, what do you want? <clears throat> Nabal sneered down at the men while he continued to chew on a fine leg of mutton. David says, may you live long, may things go well with you. <laughs> Continue. Uh, he says, I hear that you are clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well and protected them. Now please be kind to my men. Please give us any food you can find for us. Nabal leapt from his seat and hurled the mutton bone across the room. Who oh, is this David? Probably a runaway servant. <sighs> Why should I give bread and meat to a nobody? He had his men who come from who knows where. <sighs> David's men returned to camp and delivered the news. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Men, put on your swords. We'll make Nabal wish he hadn't. At no time at all, David and 400 of his men were marching up the mountain to confront Nabal. It seemed there was no stopping a battle. But Nabal's wife, Abigail, was far wiser than her husband. A servant told her what he had done. David sent messengers asking for food, but Nabal shouted and was rude to them. Go on. The whole time we were near them, David's men were good to us. They, they were like a wall keeping us safe. You've got to do something now or terrible trouble will come. There's no time to waste. Abigail quickly directed her servants to gather supplies and put them on donkeys. 200 loaves of bread? Check. 
Five sheep. Check. One bushel of cooked grain. Check. A hundred cakes of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs. Check. And check. Well, you go on ahead. I'll follow. The donkeys, loaded with good food, started down the mountain. Abigail got on her donkey and followed. From the valley, David and his men were approaching. Everything we've done has been worthless. I watched over this fellow's property, but he's paid me back evil for good. We'll wipe him out. <sighs> As David's anger grew, though, he spotted something along the path. A pack of donkeys. What's this? Well, it looks like they're carrying something. Food for a feast, I'd say. Behind the pack of donkeys, Abigail prepared for what lay ahead. I must stop this. The moment Abigail saw David, she slid off her donkey and fell face down on the ground before his feet. Please, let me speak. Let me take the blame for Nabal's actions. Abigail raised her eyes just enough to notice David's surprised face. He nodded. Don't pay attention to Nabal. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get to see your messengers, but I've brought a gift for you. Right now, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. Let the Lord deal with your enemies. Abigail rose to her feet. David and his men listened, surprised by the strength of her message. You fight the Lord's battle, so he will give your family line a kingdom that will last. He'll make you ruler of Israel. And when he does, you won't have a heavy load on your mind about killing people with no reason. The Lord will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Abigail took a deep breath and waited. David smiled. Give praise to the Lord. He sent you to find me. May he bless you for this. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. David's men unloaded the food that Abigail had brought. Go home in peace. I'll do what you have asked. Abigail made her way back up the hillside to her home. She had chosen to humble herself and do the hard yet creative work of making peace. In the end, Nabal paid the high price for his foolish anger, but God blessed Abigail. The fight between Nabal and David wasn't Abigail's problem, but she didn't use that as an excuse. She got involved, she acted fast, and she found a creative solution. You see, just because something isn't your problem, doesn't mean you can't get involved. God has given each one of us unique talents and unique ways of seeing things. So, if you see people in a fight and you're the only one who can see a way to make peace, you should help them solve that mystery. Jesus showed us how important making peace was to him when he gave his life on the cross. We can make peace with others by being part of the solution. You can help calm an argument between two people by making them laugh. You can suggest solutions to problems that others might not see. Or if a fight looks like it might get dangerous, you can find a grown-up to help keep the peace. The one thing to remember today is this. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution. So this week, be on the lookout for creative ways to build bridges between people in your small part of the world. I'm gonna have to get pretty creative myself. Here's what the bridge is supposed to look like. Mystery solved. You know, if that bridge was full-sized, I could cross an entire canyon on that one thin little rope. But first, I'd need to solve my fear of heights problem. Dun, dun, dun. I'll see you next time.
It says we need to move the first one two feet. What's that? A little to the left. Two feet. You sure? So it's right here in the plans. Sure thing, boss. You sure you're reading that right? I mean, it might be upside down. What are those? Blueprints. Hello, everybody. I'm Lawson. And I'm Brandon. And welcome to the So and So Show. Yes. And On today's show. show Wait, what are, are you? you why are, why are you, you talking, talking over me? me? No, 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 no. We discussed this over our pre-show cornflakes. We discuss no such thing. Oh, of course. See, you never listen to me. You hear me, That is but not you true. Don't listen, I do Brandon. listen. Oh, do you? How would you ever know to listen when you're too busy being on your phone the entire time? I was looking at the intro to the show, which apparently you oh, won't let me oh, do. Okay. Was the intro to the show a video of a ferret doing the conga line on look? It helps me focus. Your team in a funk? Yes. Feel like you aren't able to communicate? Yes. Then today's your lucky day. Hi, I'm Tanya, team motivator and influencer. Sometimes it can feel like your team is all over the place. Here, 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 here. But with my proven team building exercises, I can take your team from here to here before it gets to here. So call Teams by Tanya today. Today. So it's just me and Brandon, and we are having trouble being a team. He's having trouble being a team. What do you mean I'm having trouble? There's no me in team, Brandon. Yes, there is. There's an M and an E. There's a me in team. There's no I in team. That's the saying. Gentlemen, 
It seems we're having trouble communicating. Yes. yes. Brandon, turn towards Lawson. Lawson, turn towards Brandon. Now close your eyes. Without making a sound, I want you to mouth these words. I can't see you, I can't hear you. Good, keep going, mouthing those words. I can't see you, I can't hear you. Good, even bigger, but still without making any sound. Good, good, yes! Bigger, bigger! Good, I can't see you, I can't hear you! Now stop! <sighs> Open your eyes. Look at each other. Good. Now close your eyes again. Okay, I want you to slowly open your eyes. Very small, barely open your eyes. Whisper these words, Brandon, to Lawson. I see you and I hear you. I see you and I hear you. Even quieter. I see you and I hear you. Good, Lawson. I see you and I hear you. Good, keep repeating that. And each time I want you to open your eyes a little bit wider and get a little bit louder. I see you and I hear you. I see you and I hear you. Good, keep building that. I see you and I hear you. 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 Louder, tell them. I see you and I hear you. I see you and I hear you. Yes, louder. I see you and I hear you. I see you and I hear you. I, I see, see you. Here is done. Now it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, gents. Kellen. Yes? I see you and I hear you. Okay. Thanks. Back at you. Do you have a Bible story for us today? Absolutely. And here to help me tell it are... The So-and-So Show Players! Oh, yeah. Today's story comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25. There was a man named Nabal. Nabal was known to be rude and mean, and he was married to Abigail, who was wise and clever. But we'll get to her in a minute. Now, Nabal was very wealthy. He had 1,000 goats and 3,000 sheep. And it was time for Nabal to shear his sheep and sell the wool. There's another character in today's story. His name is David. You might remember David as the shepherd boy who slayed a giant and then became king. This is that same David. But in our story, he hasn't become king yet. David was staying with his men in the desert when he heard that Nabal was shearing his sheep. Francis! Oh. Yes, David. I want you to go to Nabal, and I want you to greet him kindly for me. And then I want you to remind him of how well we treated his men when they were with us. And lastly, I want you to ask him, Ask him if there's anything he can share with me and the other men. Go! Yes, yes, sir! David's men delivered the message to Nabal, but Nabal's response was, well... So, David would just like you to remember all that he did for you, and then, you know, would appreciate if you could find anything for us. 
I'm sorry. Who? David who? Son of Jesse who? <laughs> Why should I give up my bread and my meat that I have prepared? <laughs> Why? Uh, because, Why? Uh, the answer is not just no. It is no. Million times no. Be gone with you. Go. No. Go. Million times no. Million times no. Million times no. Million times, no. David's men reported back everything Nabal had said to them. No. No. A million times no. Watch. Watch. Men, put on your swords because we are going to destroy Nabal. No! David was angry. I don't have my sword. Ah! Maybe a little too angry. Ah! Now, Nabal was in big trouble unless somebody could stop David. That's where Nabal's wife, Abigail, comes in. Abigail! Yes, Frankie? Nabal just insulted David! David, the guy who's been keeping us safe while we watch our sheep. David's really mad, and I think he's out for revenge. So you, you got to do something. All right, people. Listen up. We're going to have to do this fast. I need you to go get 200 loaves of bread, Frankie. Billy? Billy? Really? Grab two bottles of wine, and I'm not talking the small ones. I'm talking the big ones and the animal skins. Sure thing, boss. Sally. Yes, Abigail? I need you to get the five sheep ready to be cooked. You got it. And Frankie! <gasps> I'm gonna need a bushel of grain. Okay. And a hundred raisin cakes. Okay. And two hundred cakes of pressed figs. Let's go, people! There's no time to waste! Abigail wasted no time. After she collected all the food, she loaded it onto the donkeys and met David, who was approaching from the desert. Ah, can you believe it, men? How he has treated us? We have served him, and how did he repay us? He repaid us with evil, and we will destroy Nabal. Pardon me, sir. Yes? I must speak with you. Let me take the blame. Pay no attention to that man, Nabal. Nabal! Yeah! He's really not worth getting that worked up over. Who? Nabal. Yeah! No. no. Eyes, right here. His name means... <laughs> <laughs> what? His name means fool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he does many foolish things. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> so you don't need to kill Nabal, do you? Yeah. No. 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 You see, God has prevented you from killing Nabal and his men. And I have brought many gifts for you to have. Ah. Yeah. So you have. It's very kind. So you don't need to kill Nabal. God will take care of it. He's going to appoint you king over all of Israel, and you don't want to have to worry about how you killed Nabal and didn't have to, right? <sighs> you make a lot of sense. Thank you. I just ask that when you're king, you remember me. All right. All right, go, go, you may go in peace. I have heard what you have come here to say, and I will do as you have asked. Goodbye! So Abigail returned home, and David stayed put. With her quick thinking, Abigail was able to make peace. The end. Great story, Kellen, thanks. And many thanks to the so-and-so show players.
Okay, okay. Th that wasn't terrible. Yeah, Abigail was incredible. Uh, to be able to soften a situation like that took a lot of courage mm -hmm. from Abigail. Yeah, David was so angry he could kill. But God used Abigail. After talking to her, David walked away from a fight and didn't make a huge mistake he probably would have regretted. Making peace isn't easy, is it? Not at all. Sometimes people think the person trying to make peace is weak because it looks like they don't want to fight or argue. But being a peacemaker is incredibly hard and it usually takes a lot of work. And a lot of raisin cakes. <laughs> oh, you know it. Great story. Thanks, Kellen. Yep, I'll see you guys next time. Later. Wish I could be a peacemaker like yeah. Abigail or, or Tanya. But how, Brandon? How? I don't know. But let's find out. Reveal the question. What are ways you can be a peacemaker? Uh, maybe you can be a peacemaker with two of your friends. Or within your family, or maybe a sports team. Or maybe you can be a peacemaker by saying you're sorry. Lawson, I'm, I'm sorry that I get angry at you sometimes. You're a great friend. Thanks, buddy. I'm, I'm sorry, too. I don't think either of us were peacemakers today. Yeah. Until now. High five! Yeah. That was close enough. All right, that was we'll close get, enough. Yeah. There are lots of ways you can be a peacemaker. Talk about it with each other. And we'll see you next time on The, the So and So, so show. show. I can't see you. Good. Oh. I can't hear you. I can't see you. What did you say, Brandon? I, I can't see you. Tanya. I, I can't see you. Are my hands still over my ears? I can't see you. Why are my eyes closed? I, I can't, can't see, see you. you. I can't, I can't hear you. you! I can't see you! I need water! I need a nap! What? I need water! What? This I is need a nap! Building. I can't see the point! Why? Good work, Tanya. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do that. <laughs> Good.